What's up? Ranger Man Fox 78 here and welcome back to Sherlock's home. So today or not today, but yesterday we started a new case. Uh, we came to his women bathhouse uh, and apparently what we know so far is that some dude came over here be like, hey man, that looked cool. Steamed that up. So basically where it's pretty much Silent Hill in this bitch where you can't even see like five feet in front of you. Uh, dude got murdered. Um, his eyeballs is I, I, we assume it's been stabbed out, but we actually don't know what the murder weapon is yet. Um, but we do know that the victim uh, is famous, so he would be targeted. But thing is, we don't know who, obviously. Which is why this is an investigation. So, yeah, that's about it. Uh, so we're right now, we are see. So find the missing weapon that used to kill Sir Rodney Bentcliffe. Uh, the suspects are at Scotland Yard and are ready to be interrogated. The belongings to the victim has and the witness are ready to be examined at Scotland Yard. I'm pretty sure too I'm supposed to actually be uh, going down back to Baker Street so I can uh, yeah, do some alchemy shit. Here we go. Perform analyst. Blood sample taken from Sir Rodney's wound. Alright. Ooh. There's another one too. Uh, sample of dirt from Sir Rodney's fingernails. Okay. Oh, and there's another one. Holy shit. Mount to metal. Uh, found it in the razor. Alright, let's go ahead and... Oh, there we go. Now it looking. Let's go ahead and go back to Baker Street. And get our, uh, samples and all that stuff. Because, you know, it's good to have as many evidence as we can now. So that way we have more to talk about when we interrogate the suspects, so. Alrighty. Hello, doggy. On the sofa for the third time today. Well, don't be surprised if Watson sits on you again. Alright. Let's actually try to figure out how to use this chemical shit. Because, you know, we tried doing it in, uh, in chapter one. And, and after the first one, I'm like, fuck it, we're just skipping them all. So, let's do it. Ooh, this is a little bit different from the uh, last one. Okay. Selenite. Whoa. Pyrite, otherwise known as fool's gold. Alright. I like how the game is already asking me if I want to skip like bro, I just started. Alright, can I move this thing or no, okay. Alright, let's see if we can try to find anything else that will look different. Ooh. White clay particles. Interesting. According to the color and its composition, I deduce that this sample is white clay. Now, I need to find which area near London this sample belongs to. Uh, I'm gonna need help with that. Uh, white London clay, so I'm looking for purple. Oh, there we go. The sample of dirt belongs to the white London clay region, located near the city of St. Albans. Very lucky how we managed to get the smallest circle on the entire graph. Um, I can't imagine having to look through the entire thing. All right. Let us analyze this blood sample. Look for a big area over London. So, all right. This blood has not coagulated well. It seems very liquid. That is strange. Let us see what is inside it. Hydrogen peroxide will bring any foreign matter to the surface. Okay. I must take a pipette and place several drops of hydrogen peroxide. Uh, I right. Well, this is where I'm gonna feel stupid, because I didn't... Oh, okay, here we go. Boom. Uh, that is peroxide, correct. Okay. By the way, I never took chemistry in, uh, school, so, um, yeah, wish me luck. Water. This blood is heavily diluted with water. Okay. Right, I was gonna say, Holmes, you gotta, you gotta also like, gonna help me out because I, yeah, I, I, when it comes to chemistry, your boy don't know shit. All right. I hated. I, dude, I used to think science was boring as hell in high school. Now I think science is pretty damn cool, especially uh, astronomy. But when it comes to chemistry, 
Uh, yeah, <laughs> your boy's stupid on that. I am stupid on that. This is a that. piece of metal taken from a brazier. It appears to be silver, but I need to be sure. If it is silver, it will be possible to melt it, since silver's melting point is at around 900 degrees Celsius. Let us compare this sample with a silver penny by testing it with acid. If it changes color to match the result of a reaction with a silver coin, then it is silver. So if it matches the result of a silver coin, then it's silver. Dude, I actually feel like I'm actually taking, like, class from, uh, from Sherlock here. Alright, I guess we'll take some acid. Boom, boom. Yeah, ain't no fool. I ain't gonna pull the entire bottle of acid on top of this. Interesting. Alright, so it turns red. Boom, there the we go. The reaction is the same red stain. It is silver. Britannia silver quality. Alright, so what did we discover? Mm, nothing. <laughs> alright. Uh, well then, alright. Search archives. And 1893 was a remarkable year for my Egyptian work in Egypt. Let's, uh, where would the archives be? I know that the last case, the archives was on the back of a carriage, but I don't think we're going to be getting that luxury this time. So, I imagine it has to be, definitely has to be in here, right? Yeah, here we go. Alright, so, remarkable year, 1893. Remarkable year for my work in Egypt, and it's Sir Rodney's draft. So, we're going to be looking for either one of those. Uh, wait, isn't Jack the Ripper and the White Chapel Mirrors the same thing? Well, I guess this one's more uh, on case on whoever the suspect was and stuff, so. Alright. Um, Alright, yeah, let's just keep going. There we go. Uh, Bent Cliff money. That's it, right? Yep. Alright, Bent Cliff's Mummy. The Great Excavation and also. Oh, oh shit. Uh, so on. Uh, has taken over three years. Sir Rodney Bent Cliff directed the archaeology, archaeological work. A mummy was found with an included eye and posed in an unusual position. The right hand was tense. As if reaching out for something or to someone. The mummy was buried upright. She has been named the Desperate Mummy due to her very peculiar characteristics. Nearby could be read in Latin. By the eye, he was punished, for he saw what he was not worthy. The mummy is believed to be Roman rather than Egyptian. As, symbols, as some symbols found in the tomb are in common with. Mithrak, Mithrak, uh, mystery. I'd never heard that word. Mithrak, 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 whatever. Here it is. By the eye he was punished, for he saw that he was not worthy. Dreadful. Yeah, I made that connection too. So as I said yes, uh, yesterday when we discovered the body, uh, his eye was poked out. Very interesting. If that's the case... Then either somebody who murdered uh, Ben Cliff either did a lot of research on him or knows and knows him very well, or perhaps he has some. Uh, hmm. So now we know that Ben Cliff's murder was sort of like a reference to the mummy. So we have a connection there, but we don't know. I mean, we, uh, we don't, honestly, man, we don't have a lot to go on in this case. So we gotta, we gotta be on our foot. We gotta be, um, we gotta have our thinking caps on. I never thought I'd say that. Oh man, sorry. I've been stuffy. Uh, whoop, wrong place. <laughs> sorry. I've been stuffy for the past uh, few days. I don't even know why. So I just got, uh, just got done with COVID. And, um, and I haven't missed stuffy all week until now, so.
I don't know what up with that, but whatever. Alright. Let's see. Uh, evidence room. Let's see if we have anything in evidence room real quick. Oh, yeah, we do. Alright, let's go ahead and look at all this. An embroidered silk handkerchief. A fountain pen with solid gold trim. Sir Gregory Pitkin, manager, room and bath, Strand Lane, London. Sir Gregory Pitkin's visiting card. Right. Garrow's belongings. When Garrow found Sir Rodney dead, he wiped the blood upon himself. A file with herbs. Do you know what it is, my dear fellow? It's the St. John's wart flower, Holmes. It's commonly used as a drug against melancholia. However, an overdosage might lead to a rash or even hallucinations. That's interesting. I I mean, auto, uh, automatically, I think that that's going to be like putting this out just to kind of throw you off your game. But, bro, come on. Come on, we've been through this a lot. I, I know these devs are quite sneaky. They know they know what they're doing. They know how to make a detective game. So, so Gregory Pitkin, manager to Mr. Blinkhorn. Dear sir, the interest that I represent requires the situation at the bath to be changed for the better. At the present time, the frigidarium excavation remains under your direction, and yet the works have not progressed. You have failed to find anything of value. We are unable to make the Frigidarium uh, accessible to the public. The Frigidarium is a valuable asset in the recreation of the Roman bath experience. I urge you to complete your work within the next two months. You have this remaining time to conclude your archaeological uh, research and to find yourself another workplace. Ooh, wow. That's a pretty rough letter. An ordinary pencil. This ring was most likely the one that Sir Rodney wore. He removed it before entering the steam room. Do we have any engraves? Engraves, engraves. Alright, none in the inside. An Egyptian symbol. It is a very old jewel. Well, it must be authentic. Surprising that, you know, whoever moited didn't take it and run. I see the join. This ring was repaired and quite badly too with silver. Why on earth would they wear such a ring? A very pertinent question. An old and rather dirty coin. Rodney Bentcliffe's notebook. It may contain something of interest. Oh, woman. Wait, what? The last pages were <laughs> torn I'm out. Bent. We must find a way of retrieving Sir Rodney's last lines. Watson, please prevent anyone from entering the room. But first, fetch me a pencil. Ah, I know what you're gonna do. To begin with, a few strokes of the pencil will be enough. <coughs> I don't want to damage the traces. <coughs> This is what you do in, um, what you call it, in L.A. Noir. Try to, uh... Yeah, I mean, it's pretty tough to explain to what I'm doing. Today, I almost found... I can't even read what it says. It, this date will go down in history. And then to gently smudge the leftover pencil marks with a handkerchief. I'm sure that Watson won't mind if I use his. Well, this is definitely more, uh, what you call it. Ah, oh, fuck it.
Mr. Holmes, the coroner had... But what are you doing? Tampering with the evidence? I prefer to make them talk. Today, I almost found it. This date will go down in history. Sir Rodney was about to make an outstanding discovery. Wonderful. I could retrieve only the final words. The rest of it is lost. Perhaps the autopsy will assist us in that matter. I'm not sure that I can allow you to inspect the body now. I am sure that you must, Constable. No. Subject, Sir Radney Bentcliffe, age 63. The right eyeball has been burst, pierced uh, to the hilt by a curved blade knife. The blade cut through the orbit of the frontal bone, ripping a part of the frontal lobe, and the corpse, wait, the corpus? Okay, uh, oh yeah, calosium, uh, after which completing its trajectory in the cerebellum, pretty sure it's cerebellum, uh, caused hemorrh hem hemorrh God damn, caused hemorrhagic, <laughs> uh, <coughs> reason all of these injuries led directly to the death of the individual at the upper lobe of the right lung there is an old injury filled with a with an amount of mucus and uh god damn collided collated slated uh debris that may correspond to a carotid infection by elements likely inhaled in a burial chamber a decaying mummy for example, or dried and decomposing food product intended to accompany the deceased in their grave. The remainder of the body does not appear to have been changed. Alright. Still got one more thing to A hand at. drawn map. Alright. Alright, so we got a lot of things that we need to talk about here. Uh, we no. Okay. All right, let's get the interrogation on. Come on, Watson. We gotta look intimidating. Wait, can we just can we look at the butt? Ooh, we can look at the body here. An unusual wound, inflicted by a curved knife which resulted in instant death, as the coroner's report says. According to the coroner, there were no cardiac problems nor lung congestion, but there were traces of fungus, possibly contracted from the Egyptian tombs. The coroner observed no stomach nor liver disease, if we're to accept that Sir Rodney was an occasional drinker and 63 years of age. Look at that booty! Right. Some light bruising, caused by a rope. The bruising is in lines. They were caused by a rope around the waist. Sir Rodney was descending somewhere. I mean, as one would speculate, probably descending into the tomb or something? I don't know. Alright, we got some brain juice. Uh... We got stolen note, strange wound, effective arrival, very liquid blood. Uh, let's see if this will connect. Yep. Steam moisture. The presence of water is due to the humid atmosphere caused by the steam. Unexplained clue. The presence of water in the blood is an unexplained clue. It must be somehow linked to the murder process. Okay. Very, very interesting. Let's go with Extreme Moisture for now. We I mean, really don't have a lot to go on. Alright, uh... At this point, I'm just gonna choose everything, because I'm not sure what would obviously go against each other. Okay, that would explain why, because nothing else does go together. A lot of clues, but not a lot to uh, work with around. So I just pretty much. I think the main thing of this uh, case right here is that we don't really get a lot of clues. It's gonna make the ending a whole lot more trickier. But nonetheless, 
Uh, let's, we gotta be careful with this interrogation here. Locked. Is this interrogation segment? Just wanna make sure we, uh, say the right things. We can get as much clues as we can, so. Alright, let's go ahead and go with Mr. Pitkin. Um, go ahead and look at what evidence we have, uh, in his belongings. Um, well, actually, tell me, like, Alright, Garo was using State John's wart powder. Uh, it provoked strong psychological side effects if misused. Okay. Um. Uh, we actually don't have a lot of evidence with each of these guys. So this is his ring. This is the coin. Letter from Sir Gregory Pick and threatening the work of Mr. Blinkhorn. Right. Do we have a blink horn in here? Oh, we do. It's this guy. Okay. Alright. So we need to keep that in mind. Uh, how about Pitkin? Do we have anything on Pitkin, though? I don't think so. We got Gal, we got Pitkin, or we got uh, Blowhorn, or whatever his name was. Alright. Please go escort this suspect for interrogation. Good day to you, Sir Gregory. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm assisting the police with their investigation of the murder that took place this morning. Would you mind answering a few questions? Tell me, Mr. Holmes, will I need to stay here for very much longer? is obvious. What? Mouth shape disdained. Okay, let I right, I'm gonna I'm gonna be thorough with this. Uh disdain. Disdain. To regard or treat with haughty contempt, to consider or reject doing something as beneath oneself. Disdain receiving an award for the, the organization, disdain to attend the ceremony. A feeling or a show of contempt and aloofness, scorn. Okay, so this guy is probably gonna try to get on my nerves, but uh, we gotta keep in a clear mind with them. Signet ring, aristocrat roots, gold chain, Casimir waistcoat, man of wealth. All right, so this guy is definitely uh, the wrist dude, an arrogant asshole. Got it. You are the manager of the baths, is that correct? Yes. I'm passionate about archaeology. I wanted to restore the ruins. My ambition is to open the baths to the public. Living archaeology can be a profitable business, although now I'm not so sure. I see. When do you wish to begin using the baths? When the archaeological researches are over, I will be free to complete the restoration. It is the usual process. What was your relationship with Sir Rodney Bentcliffe? You we were not particularly close. He had an unpleasant temperament. Suspicious. Authoritarian. Unkind. People possessed by genius may be forgiven for their nature, but not by me. Was he obstructive? Not at all. Everything he did led us to greater success. He helped us increase the potential of the building. Please tell me what happened this morning. The test that we performed this morning was a success. The steam was working well. But then, of course, that awful murder. What did you see? The steam was too thick to see anything. But ask Garrow. He saw the body first. Had Sir Rodney exhibited any recent strange behavior? Look, I'm not a suspicious fellow, but I think that he had professional interests elsewhere that he did not wish us to know about. Why should you think that? Where? I have no idea, but after all, it was not my business. How was the work progressing before Sir Rodney's arrival? Rather slowly, I would say. Sir Gregory, could you please explain this letter? You expressed the wish to call off the research work at the baths. It was all about Blinkhorn. 
He was merrily digging away and taking very little care about it, ruining everything and finding nothing of any value. But the arrival of Sir Rodney changed your mind? Sir Rodney's work was extremely promising, and it was good for the Bard's publicity. So yes, I changed my mind. Are you aware that Mr. Garrow is under a form of medication? Garrow? No. But I never liked that parasite. Do you believe Clearly. him to be capable of murder? Well, he did have blood on him. Does that make him a murderer? Some melted silver was found inside the steam room brazier. Do you know where it came from? Silver? No. Did you bring a bottle of champagne to the baths? Absolutely not. Sir Rodney did, I think. Alright. Uh, didn't get a lot from this guy. Uh, let's be honest. So... Let's see here. Uh, Blinkhorn Simulation. Blinkhorn's work was saved by the arrival of Sir Rodney, but at a high cost to his morale. Blinkhorn's interests. Blinkhorn's work was saved by the arrival of Sir Rodney, who was thankful for the possibility of their working together and the chance of learning from him. Uh, well, let's actually talk to Blinkhorn first. Before we make that decision. So, Mr. Blinkhorn. Uh... Let's see here. Uh, we have a letter from Sir Gregory Pitkin threatening the work of Mr. Blinkhorn. <coughs> and I believe that is just about the only Blinkhorn evidence we have. So let's go ahead. Please and go. escort this suspect for interrogation. Good day to you, sir. My name is Sherlock Holmes, and I am assisting the police with their investigation of the murder of Sir Rodney Bentcliffe. Would you mind if I asked you a few questions? Not at all, Mr. Holmes. Uh, my name is Percival Blinkhorn. Focused. Attentive. Can we uh, go through that again? Rusty braces, chappy workwear, not wealthy. Fresh dirt stain, recent earthwork. Calluses. Alright. What is your occupation? I'm an archaeologist, specializing in the Roman period. I'm working on several excavation sites at present, including the baths at Strand Lane. Hmm. Can you tell me more about the baths? Well, we're hoping to retrieve a great many interesting artifacts from the site, and to list any items of value before their eventual restoration and exhibition. And has it been successful? It has, thanks to Sir Rodney. What was your relationship with Sir Rodney? Well, I couldn't say that he was a kind man, no. Uh, but he was talented. I felt a great admiration for him, I, I must say. Was it your first collaboration? I had met Sir Rodney briefly once in Egypt, and I had shared my researches with him. Surprisingly, my work did convince him to come here. He arrived only a couple of months ago. Surprisingly? Well, Sir Rodney is, uh, was, uh, God, a cold man, and so very secretive, too. But I learned so much from him. I can't believe that he's dead. Can you tell me what you saw today? Well, we entered the steam room and we all went to sit down. Uh, the steam was particularly dense and I didn't see anything much further after that. I just heard Mr. Garrow shouting, but we all ran for the door and bumped into each other. I was very alarmed by this point. What did you do? Well, the door was stuck and with all the steam, it, it was quite frightening. I was barely able to see my own feet. Garrow was covered in blood. Do you believe that Garrow killed Sir Rodney? Oh, no. Garrow couldn't harm a fly. Can you recall any recent event that would occur to you now as being a little strange? Well, yesterday we had a small argument. Is that all? No. 
Sir Rodney informed me that he was to attend the London Archaeological Congress with me. Then he advised me of quite the opposite. And rather aggressively, too. Do you recognize this ring? Uh, certainly. It's the famous Aswan ring. Sir Rodney brought it back from his last campaign in Egypt. And he kept it for himself? Sir Rodney has uh, had his own particular ideas of archaeology. What can you tell me about Garrow? Well, he always looks so sad. And uh, he has been acting strangely lately. He complains about voices and visions. I will keep an eye on him because I'm worried. How well were your researchers progressing before Sir Rodney's arrival? Rather well. Ooh, I'm gonna need help with this one. <laughs> uh, pick and flutter. Flutter from Sir Gregory Pick can't do anything. I think it's this one. Yep. This letter reveals that Sir Gregory was prepared to put a stop to your work. Um, yes. But since Sir Rodney's arrival, he had calmed down. He allowed us to work. Uh, I'm not sure what they agreed on. Hmm. What will happen now that Sir Rodney is dead? Well, I haven't thought about that. Uh, but if it's needed, I will fight to defend Sir Rodney's expectations. We discovered some melted silver in the brazier. Did you put it there? No. Silver, you say? No, I don't know how it got there. Did you place the bottle of champagne in the changing room? No, I did not. Very interesting. Alright, Percival Glencorn is a true archaeologist who lives in Breeze's work. He has remained in his profession for 15 or 20 <coughs> years and still seems to enjoy it. Gregory Pitkin is the model of an upper-class citizen. He is rich in a well-respected position and he considers this his birthright. Whatever, whatever he may have done, he certainly does not believe that he should be in prison for it. Right, well, hmm, interesting. Very interesting. So none of these, so far, so none of these guys know how the silver got in the brazier, and none of these guys know how the champagne got to the room. So, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Let's go ahead and, uh, get Mr. Gary. Ooh, that boy looks tired as fuck. You can just see it in his Please eyes. Please escort right. this suspect for interrogation. We already seems day to you. Unhinged. My name is Sherlock <laughs> Holmes. I am assisting the police with their investigation of the murder of Sir Rodney Bentcliffe. Would you mind if I asked you a few questions? Ah, uh, uh, I am Tristram Garrow. Wow, this guy looks like such a mess. something here wait I think this thing just uh, I seem like this thing just uh, load up for a second Tricky bastard, where's the uh, last thing? Hmm. Alright, at this point, I'm just <laughs> I'm just gonna be scanning this, this entire body. Uh, oh, 
Wait, there's some dirt right there. I don't know if that's gonna mean anything. No? Okay. Uh. Wait, whoa. Persper. Wow, okay. Perspiration? Oh, that's a new word. Alright. Look it, look it up. Pers. Perspiration. Here we go. Oh, fucking ads. There we go. The fluid consisting of water with small amounts of area and sauce that is excreted through the pores of skin by sweat glands. Or sweat. Okay, so sweat. Basically. Okay. Fair enough. What is your occupation? I, I am a counselor at the uh, district chamber. And what were you doing at the baths? Well, I... I follow the researchers. I am uh, I interested in archaeology. You follow them? Yes. So many things happened and w we need to know. Or perhaps it's better hidden. I beg your pardon, Mr. Garrow. I, uh, I, I meant nothing, but by that I, I apologize. <laughs> wow, this guy is, uh... Yeah, he's pretty essential, isn't he? What was it like to work with Sir Rodney? It was like uh, working w with a genius. <laughs> he was a hard man, but then you, you know this world is hard. There are always people who want to steal from you. And he, uh, he, he trusted me, but, uh, oh. Are you feeling unwell? Oh, I'm sorry. He is I. Oh, I remember. Oh, I, I feel so sorry. Do you need anything? I, uh, I, I, I feel bad. I am. Uh, uh, I hear... No, nothing. I, 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 I'm better now. Wow. Please try to recall what you saw today. The room was so... so hot, I, I had to remove my glasses. I was not feeling so very well I in there. But you found the body. I saw the knife, you know. Flying through the air, I, I, I saw the blood. I tried to escape, I, I don't remember. You saw the knife? What did it look like? Everything was as if in a nightmare. It all happened so fast. The knife was shining like, like gold. Had Sir Rodney exhibited any recent strange behavior? Well, he, he had been rather secretive these past few days. Last Thursday, for, for example, I, I saw him leave. When he returned, it, it was very late. He showed me some wet coins. Roman coins, and uh, he started to laugh. His ring! Oh, it should be destroyed. Why do you say that? It is a cursed ring, digging dark secrets. Really? I, uh, it is after me now. I know it. Oh, I shouldn't have worked <coughs> in the workshop. It's too late now. This is the coin that, that he showed me. It is from the third century. It must be very rare. No, I, 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 I don't know. Thank you. Thank you. This will help me to calm down. Do be careful with the dosage. I, I will. I mean it. We discovered some melted silver in the brazier. Did you put it there? It didn't help. The power is too strong. Did you place the bottle of champagne in the changing room? What? No. Garrow appears to be rather mentally disturbed. Either that or he is a good actor. Very, very interesting. All right. So we know that Garrow has put the, uh, the metal in the bracer. Uh, so Rodney was lying to everyone about his work. He was working alone and secretly. All right. All right. Whatever. Um. Yeah. That. I mean. Very, very mentally unhinged. That guy was. A mortal secret. Why would Sir Rodney be hiding anything? Could his discovery be the motive for the crime? Very possible. 
last expedition. Find out where Serodney was several days before his murder and uncover his precious secret. Perhaps if he was with anyone. But then again, he did say that he was working alone. Uh, we could quite possibly uh, be able to figure out uh, who was with him. Um... Go. Possible silver weapon. An item of silver has been recently melted in the brazier. Alright. I think we got everything right now. Very, very interesting episode. So, uh, we, just got, we interrogated these three dudes and it's Pit Cart. Pit Cart. <laughs> Pit Ken. Very arrogant guy, but. I don't know, he doesn't, it, it's kind of coming off as like, oh, he's the asshole, so you'd want him to be the murderer, you know, um, several games try to do that, and stuff like that, but usually they don't end up being the murderer, so, I don't know, he doesn't come across me as the murderer, Blinkhorn, I don't know, man, he, he, it's like he's trying to play off the, the guy that you would motivate that you would want to work with so and you sometimes they can come turn out to be the murderer um yeah he's he's very he's very honest besides me catching him in that line about <coughs> working great with uh picking here uh and garo i mean he's very mentally unhinged and uh well kids uh don't do drugs or you'll end up like that guy um and then, yeah, and then he claims to hear voices. He's very superstitious also, which, uh, I mean, being superstitious obviously doesn't make you, uh, bad or anything like that, you know, if what, you believe whatever you want to believe, but, um, uh, religious s sacrifices can be a thing. Uh, not saying that the murder was a ritual or anything, but, I mean, yeah, it, it is, a uh, very... Whew, I don't know, man. This is a very interesting case. Uh, as I've said, though, like I feel like this game is gonna try to slip one underneath us. Uh, like maybe not none of them, none of them is the murderer. You know, um, I don't know. We we just gotta be quick on our heels to uh, when the time comes to try to figure out who's who. So, anyways, uh, this is where the episode ends. Uh, so thanks so much for watching. And, uh, yeah, see you in the next episode. I love how this game would zoom into his face sometimes.